Welcome back. Here we are getting ready for our game number five. Again, unfortunately, if you're just joining us, game number four not going to be able to be broadcasted. So we're going to continue on throughout the day and just take a look at how these teams have been doing. Takedown so far with two wins. Yeah, takedowns looked pretty solid, but Charizard in my backyard also sitting at 2-0. and So that's the matchup. We've got it right ahead of us, I believe, and that's going to be one that should determine the victor of this group. Now, it looks to me like these two teams likely to be the two that qualify out of this group in Europe, but the, the establishing dominance, always important. Yeah, without a doubt. Charles on in my backyard versus takedown here. I mean, these are the two winners, like you said. They've got to find somebody to really break this tie. So I'm very excited to see where these ones wind up. Takedown showed just a very cohesive team unit. What did you notice at the Charizard? Char Charizard just seems to understand exactly how they want to play as a unit as well. Like, the, that teamwork impact is so important at this, especially at this level of play. It, like you guys have been talking about during the cast thus far, you don't expect these are going to come out and be the world beaters right now. You know, they're not, not going to put on these incredible displays of, you know, intricate skill all the time. That takes time, and that takes a lot of effort and a lot of time in a league format where you're playing against the best of the best. It's going to take some time to develop that, but getting that groundwork down of teamwork already is going to be very impactful for these teams. That's really what I was focusing on with uh, Takedown, was the, how cohesive they looked as a unit. We'll get right into the draft here, but I mean, I, I remember commentating. You were in the league, uh, in the uh, console league in its, in, in its early stages. I remember jumping in there, looking at what Xbox was able to do, and seeing the players Baronic is probably my favorite example. Seeing Baronic come out, he was one of the original Xbox players, and look, I'm sorry, buddy, he wasn't that good. He was just sure. more at smite game. And now you look at him right now and what he's able to do in the console side of things, he's on top of the world, arguably one of the best, if not the best mid laner, and for this analyst's money, could take on the smite pro league mid laners to a certain extent. That's kind of what I'm hoping for out of this PC, out of the uh, PS4 world, where these names that you see right now might be unfamiliar. Come a year later, come a little bit more time, and you're going to be sitting here talking about them like they're Bobby and Down. It takes time. It definitely does. I mean, it, it was a slow grind up from when I started playing, and the league was definitely not at its peak in the terms of talent. You know, it took a long time sure. for it to get where it is now, I think. But you really look, for me, the biggest difference, and I think there's something we'll probably expand upon as the game goes on during some of those slow periods, is that you need a team to come in and really just beat the crap out of you <laughs> yeah. to, to really make you understand how different it really is. And, and I haven't seen that yet out of one of these European teams. So it'll probably be a little bit of a slower grind up until, the, until someone really starts to get it, it starts to click for them, and then they wipe the region completely easily. Mm -hmm. And then that starts to kind of build you back up after that. Well, so far, looking at what the draft we've got, Charizard in my backyard going with Agni, Susano, and Athena. Last time around, take that actually banned up Susano. So CIMB going to go ahead and grab this jungler. TD on the other side, Giannis, Geb, and Uller. Another Uller selection. It seems to be very popular here. Very much so. And the ADCs that have been playing him have looked pretty comfortable in yep. doing so. But I still feel like Artemis has been the, the pick, right? Eddie has been so good on that selection so far. And I feel like it, it's just different prioritization, right? I mean, it, it, it seems to be in the PS4 league so far that lane dominance in the dual lane is very important to them, so therefore Uller could be bet more valuable than Artemis, but those late game is so, it's so good for Art. Uller scares me, though, because of lack of CC immunity. Not yep. having that traditional alt really, really hurts him in moments where there's a lot of crowd control across the way, and there's a lot of crowd control across the way, so it's going to be a little bit yeah. tough uh, for the Hunter. Agni, Susano, Athena, these are all guys that I want to be able to pop Desert Fury, that I want to be able to drop Tusky, and not even going to be able to do that. It's going to be up to Geb and Red Tasker to really protect this Uller while he does his thing. I completely agree with you, but at the same time, Agni and Susano, neither of those have CC immune ultimates of their own right, and then Uller can kind of punish them by using that axe and finding those big combos True. before they can get away. It, it really is a dependent on who can get a lead. If, it, if it's takedown, they get ahead. This Uller could be really, really hard to stop, but if it's Charizard, man, you're right. There's just so much crowd control on the other side, this Uller could really struggle. It's the classic case of Uller, though, as the RDO locked in last for takedown. Uller has always been a character that you pick when you go, I'm better than you. And that's what TD's Hunter is looking Why to Why was your nose itchy? It's really hot in here and I was sweating off of my nose. Thank oh, okay. No, I just want to. I, I thought that was part of the bit, right? Like the, like the, you no, know, no, the no. nose that's, flick. That's where you do one of these. You do one of these. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going for, and that's why I, like it looked like you were itching, and that's why I called you. I'm I was, sorry, I, I was going. You know what? I was trying to hide behind yeah. it. Okay, I'm sorry. I was trying to hide behind it. 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to throw you under the bus like that. You come back from vacation, you just start killing me? Jeez. I miss you too, Tom. You know what? Your, your hair gel is very smelly today. I don't think I got a chance to wash it off my hands. Yeah. I think that's why. There you go. Now we're even? Yeah, eye for an eye. All right, cool. It's a good smell, though. It's, it's, a, it's, it, it's an average smell. It's, it's kind of like piney. It's like pine and turpentine. It's like I think you're a little biased against the smell of my hair gel because of an incident you had with it uh, many, many months ago. Oh, yeah. I did eat that gel. Yeah, what, was it, what was that for? I think I just told you I'd be like, hey, it'd be funny if you ate this, and then you did. No, it was for a bet, probably. It was, it was on some paper. You would put it on some paper. Oh, I used your hair gel to put it on paper and attack it to the wall. It was our SPL schedule, and it stayed on the wall for a whole split Yeah. with your hair gel. Yeah, and also you, you licked it. I did. And you didn't like that. No, I didn't. I did, though. I thought that was hilarious. I, I didn't like the taste of it. Do you think it's a bad sign that it stuck to the wall for, like, weeks and weeks, and I put that in my hair, like, every day? I... It, so, I mean, hair gel is supposed to stick up, right? So, yeah. is it a bad thing that you put it in your hair? Probably not. Is it a bad thing that I put it in my internal organs? Probably. I can agree with that. Right side, frosted sunshine, going to feel it in its internal organs. No dash available. Meditation is good. No stun, though. There's the dash forward. Not willing to die in the tower this early. So, takedown will not do what their name says. And frosted sunshine, going to walk on back and not head to base. Going to rely instead on his... Reflect damage and some healing at level two. Ooh, Cookser could be in some trouble here. Drizzle doesn't have that dash or the slow, and Cookser will get out of danger there. I, I like this. I like what we're seeing out of Drizzle so far, though. Pressure around the map in different lanes at different parts of the map, and especially like the pressure that he's putting on the right hand side, because Amaterasu is a character that takes a little bit of time to start ramping up. Yeah. And even though Tier Toxic is playing a Guardian in Ardeo, this is a Guardian that gets pressure in the early game because of the stance switching nature. Just like Uller is a stance switcher and likes to play in the early game because he doesn't have to wait for his ultimate to start using that, that Y. Oh, uh, the combo. Oh. There's a big one. The jump forward. However, the stun, the turnaround could be big. Eddie, not able to find the kill. Raiden, very, very good play. And Wormy, we hear you. That was pretty close. Got to be careful there. Against this Uller Geb combination, ton of burst potential, even this early on. That was impressive from Raiden for sure. Not often that you get to peel with the Ijutsu, but makes a nice play there. And Wormy got to dodge out a couple shots. Very important there from Eddie uh, that, that those were dodged out. But Eddie continues to, to be a name that I think has stood out to me so far yeah. in some of these games. This dude can play. For sure. I mean, in the Uller selection for him, as I mentioned, I still think that the Artemis that he was piloting earlier is kind of more favorable in my mind right now, just based on the meta. But if you're going to be making plays in lane with the, with the kind of talent that he's displayed thus far, then the Uller could work out. Well, so Charizard in my backyard don't really go for a late game composition. Amaterasu is a late game character for sure, but is a facilitator, right? She's not that hard carry most of the time. So when you look across the board, I think everybody else is more mid game, maybe mid to late, but more mid game focused. So takedown, yes, the Artemis has been very impressive in a number of compositions, but they don't have to go late game either. And this Uller, especially the way Eddie's been swagging out, I said Uller's the god you go to when you just think you're better than somebody. This is a way that takedown can leverage the skill gap that they perceive that they have and try to take that mid game a little bit more fast paced than Charizard might be ready for. Without a doubt. Takedown doesn't really want the, the four on fours or five on fives. They want the two on ones. Yeah. They want to use that Ratatosker ultimate. They want to use the Giannis ultimate, get numbers in their favor, try and pick you off in the jungle, try and dictate the pace of this game. Whereas Charizard in my backyard's composition is excellent at the team fighting phase. I mean, those five gods are all great in their respective roles when it comes to the big late game groupings. Not to say that they're a late game comp, because I agree with you there, but their team fight is yeah. really, really impressive. And so that's what they're really looking for. If I'm on takedown here, I'm trying to invade buffs early on. I'm trying to use my stance switcher's biggest advantages, which is that early game pressure. And the fact that they just have more buttons to push than you do mm -hmm. in the early game and try and get a lead. Because if you let... This, uh, this Charizard squad get to 28 minutes and it's even. 
They're just going to out team fight you. What I do like about Takedown is that they have gone into the RDO. RDO is a great anti team fight character. She just kind of sits in the middle of everybody and goes, All right, you can't dash, you can't move, you can't heal. And I really like that sort of uh, control aspect that RDO brings. And she feels like an odd man out with this Takedown composition, but that's really her position. The other four characters on Takedown are meant to, like you said, isolate and find two on ones and get the picks. And then RDO's there. Therefore, just in case we don't execute that and it gets the team fight time, they'll be better than us, but at least we have a leg in the race with this RDO. And RDO is, is kind of similar in this team composition to something that you would expect out of a, a Kakullin or something that is expected to get early pressure. And then when things start looking a little bit bad, the soul laner comes up, you know, superhero landing right into the middle of the team fight <laughs> and is just dominant and unstoppable for that one really, really important early mid game team fight. And RDO can do that while still supporting the rest of the team yeah. at the same time by healing them up, by peeling for them with solid CC. Whereas Kikulin is pure aggression, RDO can do a little bit of both in those team fights. And I think that's, I think it's a smart pick for takedown. Yeah, RDO is a prime example of why I don't subscribe too much to the classifications of our characters, right? I think it's a great tool when you're start, first starting to learn the game and it's necessary for, I guess, base stats and, and itemization purposes. But past that, RDO is a warrior for my money. She just happens to do magical damage. Her ability to have that early game pressure very different from most of the Guardians. And like you said, her ability to really just instantly impact the team fight uh, it is nice, but for me, it's the extended engagements that really uh, will be where Tier Toxic begins to shine. And he's going for pen boots here, so really focusing on the damage that he's going to provide. It's pretty surprising because the cooldown boots in a really strong spot right now. Not a big damage difference between cooldown and pen boots. And you get that CDR on a Guardian who has pretty long cooldowns. I think that it's just really tough to get penetration elsewhere uh, in in the mage in the Guardian build right now. I mean, you, a lot of a lot of players look for the Void Stone, and that's basically it. So the penetration boots might be able to help him there. Whereas we're likely going to see Cookster walk away. We're likely going to see a Breastplate on her anyway, right? Sure, that is true. But I think Stone of Binding is is worth utilizing. It's Absolutely. Stone of Binding yes. super good, With especially it. on Ardeo. You can proc it multiple times. Drizzle looking for a gank on this left-hand side. Eddie's going to walk over a ward here, and Drizzle decides to uh, to let it go because of the ward that Raiden had, understanding that Raiden was nice and safe there. You're right on the money. Stone of Binding coming out from Tier Toxic here. It's going to go. This has been the go-to second item for most uh, support players. And the solo laners, I haven't really seen grab onto it too hard, but because of the discussion we had and where these players are going to be, I do like the choice. Frankie being aggressed on, but Arya on a different target. And OTPC oh. finds himself safely out of the perimeter. Oh, Aya so close to getting that kill, but just couldn't find that last auto attack. Instead, elected to throw some bombs. Certainly covers a bigger distance, but not as easy to track down a moving target, I would say, as with some autos. But so TPC loses his beads and his ultimate. Does have cooldown boots finished and the evolved mage's blessing. So in a spot where can still use that through space and time more frequently than uh, than Charizard would probably like, but Arya makes at least some sort of play there to chase out the beats. Eight minutes in so far, and a rather even game here. About a thousand gold in the way of takedown, but really nothing to write home about. Although worth mentioning because we have yet to see a first blood. So that thousand gold is just pure advantageous farming coming out from takedown, which is definitely worth noting. Because again, these are the type of things that you're looking for in a brand new, not even at the league yet, right? When you're looking at new players and putting out a new foot forward, you want to see the fundamentals. Right now, the fundamentals being nailed. Frosted Sunshine, going to be dove here, but largely I expect to be fine, and he will be just fine. Love the patience there from Sunshine, not using that uh, that ultimate in a spot where I think a lot of players would have. Doesn't have any CDR yet, and cause it's because he also had his meditation up that would have given him a burst of healing. He was trying to bait takedown underneath that tower, maybe get a turnaround kill, but good patience from Sunshine. And you're right, I think that uh, in, in a new league format like this, is, hold on, Eddie. In some serious trouble here on this left-hand side. Aegis a little bit late. Typhoon getting charged up. Still hits him on the knock-up. And Eddie will and ultimately fall. Cookster claims first blood for Charizard in, in their backyard. 
Meanwhile, here's the rotation from the mid lane and the jungler. Drizzle falls down from the sky. Great pull from Cookster. Takedown in trouble. Cookster gets one. That's kill number three as Raiden puts Frankie in the ground. Drizzle on the way out. And he will not rejoin the team fight. Gold Fury has been pinged, but Charizard looking instead for the enemy red buff. I think I like that a little bit more. As do I. It's a it's a much safer call. No mana on Cookster. Wormy's half HP. It's a much safer call to just go for the buff invades. Also, Cookster's gonna be able to strip away some back camps in this spot. Plenty of farm for him. And he gets himself caught up very quickly. And that's where I was gonna go next, actually, is that you're in these sorts of overall you know newer leagues the debut for all these players for me i'm looking less about you know the the small picture who's winning each game things like that of course getting into the league is incredibly important but after that i'm looking for individual performances decision making mechanics all of those sorts of things i basically look at these sorts of instances as, as it's a scouting opportunity Absolutely. right you're, you're getting a look at a first look at some of these players and Cookster got off to a rough start, but he's been making plays ever since. Yeah, right there. Interesting play using the beads aggressively, and that's why you never say dumb in commentary, because it looked weird, but it winds up paying off Cookster. The aggressive beads gets kill number four as Guardian on the back line. Distracts long enough for him to get away with it. Oh, Drizzle could be looking for something here in mid with tier Toxic. Knock up onto Cookster. Those beads are down, but he's oh going to be able goodness. to get out of there. Typhoon was good. Drizzle should not be good but a good cc chain from frankie gets him out of there just able to wiggle on out to the left hand side beautifully played by frankie really nice there oh through space and time coming through but everyone sees it so no uh no harm no foul there from optic who still hasn't been able to finish off his chronos pendant yet to, to add into that cdr but again 20 percent still not bad cookster has definitely be, had a little bit of trouble with the farm aspect so far of the jungle but has made good plays in the actual uh, pvp instances and that's something yeah. that uh, the, learning to play the map is is one of the hardest parts of smite uh you you can get more accustomed to playing against other players in, in, in a lot of different instances but conquest is the only spot where you're going to be responsible for your own farm all the time making sure that you are keeping up and staying ahead of your opposition. And if Coaster can get that under control, then he looks like he's in a good spot. Yeah, I mean, you can you can technically go into arena or even jungle practice and just practice your combos over and over again like you're a Street Fighter player. You can absolutely do that. One thing that's harder to practice is the, is the decision trees, it is the ability to identify scenarios and know what to do there because that's just time in the gym, essentially, right? You can't set the table and say, all right, we're 3,000 gold down, right side mid harpies are respawning, but I spotted the jungler on the left side ward. What do I do? Figuring that out and figuring out all of those instances are something that just comes from playing because, of course, all of those instances will vary from team to team. If you're on team A and you figure out how to play the game and then you get four new teammates, guess what, Ryan? You're relearning a lot of what you brought. Oh, you come yeah. to the table and you say, this is how I play, and they go, this is how we play, and y'all going to make that work somehow. It is not easy. It, it is really not easy, and I say that as someone who played with four players for the majority of my the early of my career and then joined four entirely new players yeah. and it was not an easy transition whatsoever it takes a lot of time and i mean not to not spots. to you know not to gas you up or anything but you you are, you were what i would consider when when we were uh, watching you play you were an above average intelligence player your mechanics may be a little shaky oh trash but you always knew what you were doing on the battlefield and so and you always looked at the game cerebrally i guess that's why you do what you do yeah. but you know, seeing that that was a hard transition for you, I think really speaks volumes at how intricate and how truly meta this game can be beyond hitting your skills. It really can be. Cookster looking for aggression again, and oh. Rizzle just gets crushed, but Cookster will go down himself through space and time, coming through to get Optic there. But both Soul Leaders have joined the fray in the duo side. There's Eddie taking care of business. OTPC picks up the last hit onto the Hunter. Raiden going to fall on down, two for one so far. Takedown wins their first team fight. Still have a couple members lurking. Eddie looks like the, the aggressive mindset that this guy has is, is really, really obvious in the way that he plays the game and the way that he's positioning consistently. 
Doesn't get punished for his aggression there. Doesn't strip away the red buff either. That was nicely stolen. I, no, no, Eddie did get it. Looked like I thought yep. Frost and Sunshine was able to seal it away with the mirror, but Eddie is rewarded for his aggressive and, nature. And I so that looked like just recklessness. That recklessness and aggressiveness are are, are very closely related cousins, but one's good and one's bad. I like high aggression, and that was high aggression. I thought it was calculated because he did have the the like defensive line, if you will, of his Ardeo. Ardeo stood there next to Frankie and just said, our hunter's going for red, but y'all ain't gonna catch him. Drizzle looking for Wormy here. Frankie in support, but Cookster's doing so much damage. Through space and time we will finish it off for TPC. Nice shot as Cookster now on the run. Gonna get rooted out here by tier toxic. Slowed down again by the Giannis, but he misses it. Nice stun. Cookster getting cooked. And Drizzle makes it rain, taking down the jungler. Four kills in total for takedown as they fight their way back into this game. Previously down, now up 1,000 gold at 15 minutes. And this is when Uller's hitting his stride, Ryan. Uller's hitting their stride, as is Ardeo. I mean, Toxic has been a part of the last yep. two team fights, and. What do you know? Takedown wins those two team fights back to back. It really is that that feeling of, of that pressure that Ardio can bring, especially against Susano, who really struggles against Cripple. Cripple's really great against him, and the pen boots and the binding really paying off. Number two on the player damage. Now, of course, inflated because of over there being just bangerang in the solo lane, but the damage has been felt from the Ardio. She has been impactful in that regard, and this is the again the choice to go into the pen boots. I don't. I agree with you. I think that the the blue boots are kind of the default option. But if you change your build, I need to see you play differently. And I'm seeing Ardio play differently. So hats off to that one. I won't knock that choice. Sure. Toxic playing very aggressive with this build now. Finishes off the breastplate of valor that you expected earlier on, and is working towards a void stone. So really all about that penetration. Kind of squishy, and so I'm getting far. a little scared. But no health. That's what I was about to say. No health at all in this build. Really relying on the fact that. He's a guardian, and guardians get more health per level. Still going to be tough for him to frontline against a, a fed, pretty fed Susana. Frankie, everything dumped on him. Just God. I mean, what more is there to say there, folks? Sometimes you let the game speak for itself. Every ability in the book in the middle lane takes down the support. Really not much for uh, takedown to lose off of that one. Of course, you don't want to die and lose some farm there, but... I'm yelling at my support, but I'm not that upset. Okay, what are they getting? Right, a couple ultimates from uh, from Charizard. Frankie throws his out as well, but no invades really to be had quite yet. Eddie was looking to support, but with Charizard in my backyard having the power play right now, they Gems will go already the up. Gold Fury, but Frankie's on the way back, and TPC has that through space and time. Here it comes. Eddie needs to stop playing this coin and just go in. He's looking for the steal instead of the dissuasion, and it's going to go the other way. Eddie played it dangerous and wound up losing. Up in the sky, Drizzle ha could go for a certain target. Cookster will be that target as he around the back comes Toxic, but he's all alone here, and could fall quickly if Charizard plays it aggressively. And that's exactly what they're doing. Frost and Sunshine getting some help now as Toxic gets back towards his team. Frankie, the sacrificial lamb, Drizzle in a ton of trouble. And he could fall, but Cookster teleported not all the way to Drizzle, but right just to that jet stream. Dead. That one was a little bit rough for me. That one definitely hurt just a little bit. I think if if Eddie goes out there and just shows his face instead of looking for the steal, Charizard have to walk away from the Gold Fury. I think they have to. Re I think they have to reset. It, it takes enough time for Takedown's team to get there, and I think that that is the mentality. That is the the stark difference between ranked and competitive. Yes, that is, that is a ranked play is that you look for the, the you look for the steal, and it's not something I'm going to roast. It's something I'm going to bring up, and that's something that you need to see these players walk away from as they become and transition from ranked into competitive players. These are the mindsets and the things that are vastly different in the world of competitive five-on-five -five communicative teams as opposed to just the random solo cues. In competitive play, it is not always, but sometimes the right, I the right, the objectively best play is sometimes that you need to die. Yes, in competitive yes, play. yes, yes, yes. That is not always the case in ranked, very rarely the case in rank. TPC is getting crushed in mid. Cookster's got Typhoon, and he'll use it, but that bought enough time for Drizzle to come and answer back. Good at 
time buying there by TPC to make sure that goes one for one. But you're right. I think that if Eddie has a, you know, a couple more months of competitive play under his belt, he understands that stealing that Gold Fury isn't that relevant. Exactly. It, it's just better to get them off of it, delay the Gold Fury from happening, buy time for your team. That's a men it's a mentality thing. And, and Eddie's clearly a playmaker. That's the what, what you're seeing from the way that he thinks he should be playing the game is that he's out there and be making big plays, the, the star level plays. And I respect that, but there are times where you just got to hit the bounce pass. You know what I mean? Just do the, do the fundamentals and make sure that the, you're putting your team in your best spot to win. I mean, that's, that's why I love, I mean, to go with the basketball analogy, that's why I love players like Tim Duncan to stick it back to smite. I think that's why I love players. Uh, How that? can you love Tim Duncan and J.R. Smith at the same time? They are the opposite end of the spectrum. They very are. They, they very much are, but I'm also a man with varied taste. I also, I don't know, I also have Dizzy Gillespie flow into Papa Roach on my playlist, so you know what? Actually, not much Papa Roach, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't, I don't know if you want to be advertising that, Tom. That's Finch's playlist, okay? Whoa, hold on. Finch has this very similar playlist to me, and I don't have any Papa Roach. So Finch I'm, does. Then, I'm, then we're going to have to have a discussion after yeah. this cast, because that's disappointing to me. You're, you're, this is a bit, right? Like, I need, to, I need to know that Finch doesn't have Papa Roach on his no, playlist. No, no, no. Finch really likes Papa Roach. It's his favorite band to have for Fallout Boy. Okay. They, you didn't know that? No, you're messing with me. I'm really not. Right. I have too much respect for Finch to believe this. He loves Papa Roach. I don't Last resort. You. I don't believe you. Papa Roach and Alien Ant Farm are Finch's two favorite bands after Can Fallout Can you name Boy. any Alien Ant Farm song except for the Michael Jackson cover? Yes. Please do. Deadly Anemone. I'm looking it up right now. Don't. <laughs> Why? Why not, Tom? Because there was a lawsuit where it had to be oh. deleted from the internet. Really? That's insane. It must have been a really good song. There's the ultimate. Not so good for Cookster. And he'll be singing a different tune in the fountain safely. As he sneaks away there with a hair of HP. TPC off the mark. Takedown right now, just looking for anything. Frosted Sunshine and Tear Toxic battling out here on the right-hand side. But Frankie in nice some dive. trouble. He's going to be cut to pieces. And now Takedown trying to get out of here. But Charizard in my backyard pulling out all the stops, looking for their last resort. TPC escapes to the left. Really nice stun there from Arya. Agni, Agni is a very deep character in that there's a million different ways you can play every engagement. And using your best options in those spots is what, what separates a good Agni player from a great Agni player. And, and in that situation, I think that's the only way that Arya gets the stun off before Frankie gains CC immunity yeah. from the extended rollout. That, that was a heads up option there. Nice taunt there, and the Bear's going to be in trouble here. Half HP already, heals it back up. Tier 1 tower going to be aggressed on. Here comes Agni. Flame wave is strong. Bear in trouble. Stunned out. Guns out. And Tier Toxic falls down. Meanwhile, Eddie over here, left hand side. Nobody knows what he's doing. He's stealing the gold's fury. He's a smooth criminal. And you're all out of alien end farm references. Takedown is is okay with that loss. Losing their support or solo, losing their tier one tower in solo for a gold fury. I think that's a okay for takedown. But Frankie and TPC showing up to make sure that. Tier 2 doesn't go down was absolutely critical. Tier 2 and a Tier 1 would have been far, far in Charizard's favor. Now you're basically in an even game so far. What has been right. a, a real bloodbath. I mean, look at, the, look at the graphs. I mean, up and down, up and down between these two. But again, I still think this favors Charizard's team composition overall. I, I think that in their four-on-four, five-on-five groupings, they're going to be able to do just a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's it's really up to Tier Toxic. And this was, you know, I I had mentioned that Tier Toxic will sort of be the the one hope for these team fights. But what I didn't mention was that I, I would have liked to, the Cerberus again, so it was banned out if I'm not mistaken. But the Cerberus again would have been the ideal for me. And and with that in mind, are, are there other characters that would do the same thing? I mean, can you look to the solo Hades, maybe? Where would you go? What do you think is the most similar to the Cerberus? And don't say Ares. It, 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 in that sort of idea that of what you want out right. of that solo yeah. laner? Big control. Big control. I think that the tier is pretty, is pretty much there. Drizzle's looking to, to chase down Cookster, but 
will give up that chase with Frosted Sunshine there to support. I think if you're looking for pure control out of the solo lane, uh, Sun Wukong comes to mind as one who's very disruptive mm. and can bring a little bit of control as well. But Ardeo certainly can be right there alongside those without the sort of weird, you know, Geb solos and yeah. Kumba solos. Kumba's probably the Kumba. one that I think of. Kumba's probably the go-to. I really don't think Kumba solo is that weird anymore. The clear is so strong. Winds up being very impactful. Tier Toxic defending his Tier 1. Frankie on the right-hand side. And, well, Drizzle going to be pushed up and pushed down. Raided. Taking down Drizzle. Here's the push forward from Frost and Sunshine. And just zoning out all the team takedown can offer. Tier 1 tower is history as the Hunter takes care of it on the back end. Cookster takes care of Eddie. Arya takes care of OTPC. And the homie will sit down. Ooh, pull be there for Cookster as well. Great team fight from him and the rest of take er, and the rest of Charizard in my backyard. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. You hit your first five on five of the entire game yep. and Charizard win it without breaking a sweat. I mean, both Raiden and Arya have all of their relics up still. I mean, that, that was easy because their AOE is so strong. Their CC is so strong. And Takedown is so single target oriented that they just can't keep up. The wrong choice from Frankie. Frankie, a little cranky there. Didn't like that play. Blink forward, get five man stun, and what happens? Nothing. That the best case scenario, you die and don't defend a Phoenix. That just is a poor choice that I think uh again, even knowing that these uh are inaugural players, I mean, can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. Doesn't work out for a takedown, but they only lose a mid Phoenix so far, and honestly, they have respawns to where they might be able to defend this fire giant, potentially, from Charizard. The problem is, now Charizard has finished off a ton of key items. I mean, Raiden's nearly done with his Odysseus foe. Chronos Pendant's down, excuse me, done for Arya. Frosted Sunshine's nearly done with the build. It's tough now for Takedown to, to take a five-on-five -five team fight when the last one went as poorly as it did before Charizard had finished off a lot of these items. 2640 on the clock here. Charizard with a commanding lead so far, about 4,000 gold. Commanding might be overselling it so far, but the way that they've been playing certainly makes it feel so commanding. Ryan's mentioned at length their ability to just control the five versus five, and I would not criticize how much he's spoken about it. It is absolutely one of the most important things in this game. It's what's separating these two teams. Takedown has been a great wow. contender, and they're just getting cleaned up. Tier Toxic on the Tier 2 running away. And Charizard in my backyard are in Takedown's front yard, pushing on the lawn. Eddie doing what he can, but he's forced to jump away. And, and it all, for me, goes back uh, so much about these team compositions. That all goes back to picks and bands. But uh, again, if this is an Artemis for Eddie, maybe he's able to make some plays I during agree. this point. He was really he was loud during the first four minutes, and then after that, we really haven't seen him. Well, I think the composition, as I said, was just supposed to win earlier. Takedown said, we got two wins. We're swagging out. We're good. We don't have to play these 30-minute games. We can win 22 minutes like the pro leaguers. Let's just go for it. And unfortunately, Charles out of my backyard is looking to be that juggernaut that's going to stop or could stop what Takedown wants to do. Still not over, but 6,000 gold already growing this lead is. Definitely uh, the team composition for Takedown screams, I'm just gonna make my own place. You know, this is not a particularly cohesive team composition. It's, yeah. it's not all, you know, it's not like no one picked with, the, with their teammates in mind, but I, it just doesn't seem to mesh particularly well. And it on feels the other hand, Charizard's has meshed very, very well. There's great setup for the for the Agni Bombs. Wormy has been the first one in, the, the, the one to lead every charge. Everyone seems to be in the right spots overall. And I think that you can just see the Charizard in my backyard is just a, a better, better at playing as a team right now. And that often ends up being more important than individual skill in, in every single sport, eSport, whatever. I mean, yeah. teamwork is, is the most important thing. Yeah, e easily, easily. There's Cookster. Nice portal from the Honest to protect himself. Knockup will not be used correctly. Charizard in my backyard, though, pushing left-hand side. No Phoenix damage just yet. 
And the knockup from Ratatasker, good. That's a good ultimate. And Geb making the plays. Takedown, looking to jump back in. Raiden's mounted archery doesn't do a whole lot, but Toxic has been left. The only one left here in this engagement. Stun off the mark there from Arya, but Cookster is in some trouble in the mid lane. Drizzle forced back, as is Cookster, both low, but Drizzle's close to his fountain. Phoenix will go down on the left-hand side. And that's a big win for Charizard. They got what they came for. Eddie looking for some more, and this is what I've seen from him, that aggressive nature, but may have put himself in a bad spot now. Wormy trying to stop the help from coming his way. TPC's bees go down, and Eddie is going to find Cookster in the jungle. That's the play. He uses the communication from the team to make sure he doesn't get pincered, and then looks to set up a pincer himself. Good control coming out from the Amaterasu, but there's Wormy. He's going to avoid the Yana's damage and take down off of the back of Eddie. Could find their way back into Ooh. this team fight, but it's OTPC, homie. Double kill for the mid lane main. Great shot there with that through space and time. That'll save the game for the moment for takedown. That's what is this team composition, it's about players making individual plays. Eddie makes an individual play, finding Cookster in the jungle, hunting him down. Then TPC makes an entirely individual play with that ultimate. And now they're starting to work together as the dive continues, looking for Wormy. Looking for him and likely going to find him. The stun and the gun and OTPC walks away, having a lot of fun. Take down here. Not quite number one. Nice. I was wondering if I was going to commit to the rhyme. I had one. I wasn't looking for it. Mm. I was just like, do I want to do this? And I said, I do. Always. So I said, yes. You always want to commit to that. Tier 2 could go down. Cookster's here, but doesn't have any relics. And there's the cripple field. Cookster almost toast there. Mantle of Discord buys him a moment. Through space and time will not land as Eddie will finish off a Tier 2 on the left. Takedown get quite a bit from that little skirmish. End up getting... 3,000 gold for themselves. That lead now experience in their favor, actually. Gold is negligible at this point in the game. Takedown's not done yet. Absolutely the way you want to get back into this one. And again, understanding the, the composition. Just like they did last time. Got to make these individual pickoffs. Got to make these individual plays. Eddie just relying on his on, on his uh, the communication from his team to say back off. You're getting collapsed on by the mid lane rotation. Mid lane stops and Eddie just sits there and goes. Susano's got to come back at some point. Takes advantage of that. Gets the power play five versus four. TPC ults through the team fight and take down just like that. Able to essentially tie the game. Still technically a little bit behind as they haven't finished their sixth items for the most part, but. Takedown right now have gone from a position to lose to a position to win. Toxic will take a bit of damage, but a good Geb shield from Frankie will stop too much of it from going his soul laner's way. Uh, I've, I've often said it about Smite in particular, because that's just the one I'm so familiar with, is I won't get a chance to talk about it, because Cookster is getting engaged upon. Nice through space and time, hit him down to about half HP, and here comes TPC looking for a bit more. Mantle helping out Cookster yet again is. He's in some trouble still. There's the follow-up. Looks like he's able to just get collapsed on. Drizzle didn't even need it, but here comes the rest of the team. Drizzle picks up one. That'll be number 11 for takedown. This could be the rest of Charizard knocking forward. Raina gets back on the horse. A beautiful ultimate from Frankie. Obviously won't nail the hunter, but here comes Ardio. Speeds and Aegis from Raiden. Good taunt from Wormy to peel him off that ADC, but Toxic still standing. Charizard in my backyard is not a full deicide for takedown, and they should be able to take down the Titan with that one. Plenty of time on these respawn timers. What a comeback from takedown. Yeah, absolutely. Takedown have a couple of fire minions on their Titan, but like you said, the timer is good. The HP levels aren't. So Takedown is going to be flirting with danger here. But I'm with you, Ryan. This was a wonderful play from Takedown. Very interesting to see them make their comeback. Well earned by this yes. team. I think they fought their way back into it beautifully. TPC came up huge in the late game for them, and that's kind of what you need when you're starting to fall behind. Some individual plays will get you back in it, and TPC makes them there. But also, I mean, we've been praising the teamwork from Charizard so far. In the pr Sometimes you just need to put a bunch of pressure on a team like that all at once. You know, try and 
throw off their comms, make them see a bunch of different things. Through space and time here, through the cosmos there. And everyone was chasing Cookster. Everyone else on Charizard was full HP, but they couldn't help him. They were kind of lost. And from there, it's a five on four that, that the, the rest of Takedown gets to clean up fairly easily. Charizard in my backyard, I still think, should feel pretty good about where they are I agree. right now. But it's just one team fight doesn't go their way and they lose the game. What I liked the most there was uh, seeing Eddie provide something different than he did earlier from what we saw. That's another important thing when you're looking at newer players. You want to see how flexible they are. Sure. And with the Artemis... <clears throat> excuse me, versus the Uller. Very different styles of play. Uller is a pseudo-assassin. Mm -hmm. And so Artemis just walks up there in the team fight and goes, ultimate. And then you're just looking to sort of battle it out. Uller has to be a little bit more uh, guerrilla warfare-esque. And hiding in the jungle, finding that jump on the enemy, that was exactly what he needs to do. It's not what he does in the Artemis. Two no. different play styles. Very cool to see that presented here. And what I was about to say was you can kind of tell. I mean, as soon as you play against a player in particular, but even watching from the top down, the way a player moves is very, very important, and Eddie moves with a lot of confidence. Yes. He seems to know exactly where he's going to be, and that last team fight is a great example of it, right? Charizard in my backyard, they're moving erratically. They don't really know where everything is going. They, it's tough for them to figure out exactly where Cookster is going. You know, the communication isn't there. The, the movement from some of these players has impressed me, and I think that we're going to see some, some excellent plays out of them throughout the fall split. That's going to do it for takedown in their opposition, Soul.